Dapper is one of the most popular object relational mappers in the .NET ecosystem. It's incredibly fast and easy to work with, which is why it's so popular, but it can be tricky if you have some complex mappings from your SQL query into the object model. So in this video, I'm going to show you the most common mapping scenarios with Dapper and how to solve them. Here's what we're going to do. I have a get product query handler here, which handles the get product query and uses NAD Framework Core to fetch a single product response from the database based on the request's product ID. I'm going to install Dapper in the application project and we're going to use it to rewrite this query using SQL. So let's get started by installing Dapper. I'm going to look for the Dapper NuGet package and I'm going to install the latest version. Dapper is a very lightweight object relational mapper and it's really simple to work with. All you need is an instance of an IDB connection. Dapper exposes a set of extension methods on the IDB connection interface, such as query first, the generic query method, execute scalar, execute async, and so on. So we first need to obtain an instance of the iDatabase connection. So here's what I'm going to do. Inside of my abstractions folder, I'm going to define an interface which is going to be my iSQL connection factory. This interface will contain just a single method returning an IDB connection instance. I'm going to call the method create and let's use it in the get product query handler. I'm going to inject an instance of our iSQL connection factory and now we can use it to generate our database connection. I'm going to leave the EF core query in place for the time being and let's instantiate our database connection. I'm going to say SQL connection factory create. And it's really important that you place your connection inside of a using statement, whether it be the one using a block scope or the inline using statement like I'm doing here. It's critical that you dispose of the connection when you're done with it. Now that I have my database connection, I can write a query to fetch my product response from the database. So I'm going to say connection query first or default async. So this is the same method that exists with EF core and you'll see that it accepts a bunch of arguments. The most important one is the SQL query that you're going to be passing to Dapper. It's going to execute this query in the database and then map the response back into your object. This method is generic. So I'm going to specify product response as my generic argument and then I can produce my SQL. So I can say select and then I'll specify my columns. So this is going to be ID, name, SKU, price, let's say currency and price amount. So these are the names of these columns in the database. And I need to provide a filter or a where statement to only fetch the single product that I'm interested in. First of all, we need to say what is the table that we are querying to fetch these columns. So I'll say from products and then I can add my where statement. I need to filter on the ID column and provide a product ID parameter using Dapper. How you provide a parameter with Dapper is you can pass in an anonymous object containing the properties that match the parameter names that you specify in your query. So I'm going to say that the product ID is equal to my request product ID, but I have to be careful because this is a strongly typed ID and I'm actually looking for the ID value, which is a good, and Dapper is able to map this to the ID column in the database. This is all that I need to write a simple query using Dapper and get back my response. So now I can replace the product here with my product response and finish my get product query handler. With that, I can also get rid of the product here and I can simplify my dependencies because I no longer need the iApplicationDB context. You can see how quickly we were able to rewrite this to use Dapper. And now we have a functioning query handler. We also need to implement our SQL connection factory to be able to run this. So I'm going to add a respective implementation in the persistence project, which I will call SQL connection factory. This will be an internal and sealed class implementing our respective interface. And all I need to do is to return a new MPG SQL connection and give it the connection string. So how am I going to provide the connection string value? 
let's say I create a private read-only string, which is going to be my connection string. I'll pass it to my MPG SQL connection constructor. I'm noting that I'm using PostgreSQL as my database, which is why I'm using the MPG SQL connection. This would function just the same if you were using any of the other databases supported by Dapper, which are most SQL databases, and you just need to provide the respective SQL connection instance. So inside of my constructor, I'm going to inject an I configuration instance and then I can use it to grab my connection string. So the connection string name in my application settings is called database. And let's also throw a new application exception saying that the connection string is missing. So at runtime, if we try to instantiate the SQL connection factory without a connection string, we're going to throw an exception. I also need to register this with dependency injection and I'm going to say services, add singleton, and I'll register my SQL connection factory as a singleton service because it is stateless. So now I can run my API and let's check out if our get product query is working. I'm going to send a get request from Postman to my API and we're trying to fetch a single product based on its identifier. So let's send this request. I hit the breakpoint inside of the handle method and let's create our database connection. This seems to be working. And if I try to execute this query, watch what's going to happen. I received an exception and let's see what it's telling us. It's saying that a parameterless default constructor matching these arguments was not found. So why is this happening? If I take a look at my product response, it's actually implemented as a record. And Dapper with the latest version still doesn't support mapping from a SQL query back into records. So unfortunately, I'll have to refactor this to use a class. I'll get rid of the constructor altogether and I'm just going to expose public getters and setters. The links can also have an init setter and I no longer need the deconstruction. So I have the same properties as before in my product response, only now I'm using a class instead of a record. So let's see if this fixed the problem. I'm going to send the same request to our API and we hit the breakpoint inside of our handler. And this time we get back a product response because we are using a class and you can see the properties are correctly mapped. So I'm going to press continue and we get back the response in Postman containing the details for this product. But you're going to notice that the currency and the amount appear to be null, and this is telling me that they are not mapped correctly from the database. So why is this happening? If I take a look at the query, you'll see that the price currency and price amount are using snake case, and in my object model, I'm expecting the currency and the amount properties. So to fix this, we need to adjust our query to be able to properly map into our object model. So I can assign each column a name that's going to be identical to what I have on my object model. So I'm going to use the as SKU. This is going to be as currency. And I'm running out of screen space here. So I'm going to move the columns into a separate row. So let's align them vertically like this and let's add the price amount mapping as the amount. The hard coding is going to work, but it's not refactor proof. You could make this into an interpolated string and derive the property values using the name of operator and specifying your product response and the respective column. So you could turn your query into something like this, where we specify each column inside of the query. I need to specify the SKU and then the currency and the amount columns. And now our query is properly mapped from SQL into the exact columns that we are expecting in the object model. If we run this version of our query, let's see what we're going to get back. I'm sending the request to our API again, and this time we properly get back the currency and the amount columns. The benefit of this approach, where I'm using the name of operator to specify my columns, is that it is refactor proof. So if at any point I change the name of these columns, the name of operator is going to track those changes and it won't break my queries. So this is something that you should consider 
or you can just hard code the values and figure out at runtime that you have a problem. So this is a simple example where we are mapping just one record from the database, but let's take a look at a more involved example, such as fetching a single order from the database. The trick here is that we also need to fetch a list of line items. So let's see how we would do something like this using Dapper, where we have a one-to-many relationship and we need to somehow fetch two different objects in a single query. I'm going to start by injecting our iSQL connection factory. So private read only iSQL connection factory and let's inject it from the constructor. And now we can rewrite our handle method to use Dapper. I'm going to leave the EF core query in place just for reference and let's see how we're going to do this using Dapper. So I start by opening a new connection to the database and I want to get back an order response. Now this again is a record, so I'll have to start by turning it into a class. I'll get rid of the constructor and the deconstructor and I'm going to make sure to assign a default value to the line items property. And I'm also going to convert this into a class to prevent any issues that we have with mapping from a SQL query into an object using Dapper. Let's close these down and let's get back to our query. So this one is going to complain. I'm going to comment this out. So here's what I'm going to do for my query. I'm going to get a list of products back from the database by calling connection query async and I need to specify some generic arguments. The trick here is that I want to load more than one object from the database so I'm going to need my order response, but I'll also need to fetch the line item response. However, the query method can only return one type, so I'll have to pick order response and then figure out a way how to map these using Dapper. Now I need to provide my SQL query. So I'm going to say select and let's fetch the columns one by one. So I'm going to need the order ID and the order customer ID to map them into the order response. And then I'm going to need some columns from the line item table. These are going to be the line item ID as the line item ID and the line item price, which will come from the price amount column as the price column in the response. Then I need to say where I'm selecting these from. So from the orders table as the O, I'm going to join on the line items table as LI and we're joining on the order ID being equal to the line item order ID. And I also need my filter that the order ID is equal to the order ID parameter. So let's provide the other arguments that Dapper is going to need. Then I need to provide a mapping function, which is going to take an order and the line item, and it's going to return the order back. This actually matches the types that we specified here. So this is going to be an order response and the line item response. And then we need to figure out a way to return only the order back. So let's return the order straight away. And let's carry on before I show you how to do the mapping. Then I need to provide my parameters. So let's just provide the order ID as the single parameter that we have. And it's also important that I tell Dapper where one of these objects starts and where it ends. So how you do this is by specifying the split on column and I'm going to say that this is the line item ID. So what we're trying to do is to load two different objects from the database. Dapper needs to know where one of these objects ends and where the other one begins in the SQL query and this is the line item ID column. So now Dapper is going to map these two columns to the first object or class and these two columns to the second line item response. So with this in place, all I have to do is to adjust my mapping here and I'll just do something lazy and say line items add and just add the line item to the list of line items on the order. What's going to happen here is I'm going to get one object for each result in the join between orders and line items. So what I need to do is to get my order response by selecting any of the orders available. Let's say I take the first one 
and now our query seems to be working correctly. So let's get rid of the old stuff and I'm going to specify the missing order ID directly in this exception. And now I'm going to show you what we have going on. Let's place a breakpoint here and let's try to fetch an order by the ID. I'll send a GET request from Postman to the respective endpoint on our API and let's try to fetch this order. So we hit our breakpoint inside of the query handler and let's try to fetch these orders from the database. If I take a look at the orders collection, you'll see that it has 10 records, which matches the number of line items that I have in the database. The problem here is that each order will contain just one line item instead of all 10, because we're only mapping one row from the result set and it only contains an order and a line item response. So our query is working, but it's not returning the correct response. So here's what you need to do in a one-to-many mapping scenario. You need to create a dictionary. It's going to have a key matching your primary key in the database, which is a good, and the result is going to be an order response. I'm going to call it orders dictionary and let's create a new dictionary instance. And here's how we're going to use our order dictionary. So I'm going to say, if orders dictionary, try get value, and I'll give it the order ID as the key. I'm going to say out var existing order, and if such an order exists, I'm going to assign the order instance the value of the existing order. Because I'm only returning one order, then this is safe to do. And if this isn't the case, I'm going to say that orders dictionary needs to get a new value for the order ID key, and I'm going to pass it the order instance. What this is going to do is we're always going to be working with one instance of the order, which will be added to the dictionary, and then it's going to be reused for all of the mapping functions. Because the order is the same and the line item is the object that's changing, we're going to end up adding the line items to one order instance. And then what we can do is here, I can say orders dictionary and take the order that has the order ID from the query. Let's check out how this is working. I'm going to send the same request to fetch a single order from the database. We hit our breakpoint and we create the dictionary and then I place the breakpoint inside of the mapping function. So I'm going to press continue and let's observe what is going on inside. So because this is the first mapping, our orders dictionary is empty. So we're going to end up adding an order instance to the dictionary. Then we're going to add the first line item to this order and the next time that we execute the mapping, we're going to get the existing order from the dictionary. It already contains one line item and we override the order instance with the one that we mapped before. Then we're going to add one more line item and it's going to end up having two. So I'll get rid of the breakpoint and press continue. We're going to land here after the query async method with just one order in the dictionary and it's going to contain all 10 line items and this is the proper way to map a one-to-many relationship with Dapper. If I press continue, we're going to get back a response containing the order information and the respective line items. This is how you can solve the most common mapping scenarios with Dapper and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to see how Dapper compares with EF Core in terms of performance, take a look at this video next and until next time, stay awesome.